They said, look, let's watch the CRB index, okay? Let's monitor, the, we'll, we'll watch the price of gold. And actually, the price of gold has been flatlined. They had more or less a de facto gold standard from $350 to $450 flatlined from 1982 to 2007. One of the most profitable trades in the world year after year after year after year was to sell straddles on gold. In other words, sell a call and sell a put, let the people stupid enough to buy options which are a wasting asset, let them eat premium as we would say on the floor. And they would flatline gold, the, the Fed and in, in their conduct of monetary policy for 25 years. And, <laughs> you know, the price, when it got to 450, the Fed had tightened. And when it had get down to 350, the Fed had loosened. That was one of their proxy variables included in the mix that the Kansas City Fed recommended. And St. Louis and Milton Friedman and Lindley Clark and everybody protested wildly. They're protesting to this day. But the fact of the matter is, is the price of gold was perfectly flat for 25 years and that the ex money supply exploded and frankly Milton Friedman was flat wrong. He said three months after the surge in monetary growth and, and he said right around in September of 82, well it's just around the corner and then he'd say a couple months later, it's just around the corner and then he says, well it seems like the lags are a little different than they used to but it's just around the corner. He stopped speaking publicly about 18, 1983. He wouldn't take any more questions in public about it. It was too embarrassing. He was too wrong. He was too far off the mark. There were inflationary influences in, in the economy. Everybody knows this. Although if you look at uh, the rise in the price of oil or the rise in the price of gold, actually they have been perfectly flat in the last year, the price of those has been perfectly flat if you denominate it in a basket of currencies. Actually what's happened is just that the dollar has been devalued, okay? But that doesn't mean hyperinflation. The treasury market is still running strong. It's still a bull market in treasuries and the moment it isn't, the Fed's going to tighten interest rates. You can take that to the bank. So look at the profound deflationary you know, how many goldsmiths do you know? How many silversmiths do you know that really make a living with gold and silver? There's, it doesn't have the central vital impact on the economy anymore that it used to. I mean, look at the role of semiconductors. Now, is anyone alleging that the role of gold in the economy and platinum and, and catalytic converters is more important than the role of semiconductors in our networked economy. L look, look at the Nobel Prize for Moore's Law. Moore's Law states that the price of semiconductors and computer memory decreases by 50% every 18 months. That's a hyper-deflationary influence. A, a reduction of 50% in price every 18 months, he won a Nobel for that. And that's been true for 35 years and it's still true. Now, as we become wired and network together and, and all this, these productivity surges that we're getting from emails and the elimination of fax machines and other things like that, what about that profoundly deflationary influence of the price of semiconductors coursing through the economy? Well, I can do five times as many things now with a computer that's three times as powerful at a third of the cost as I did 18 months ago. So in order to have an accurate viewpoint rather than a, re a religious dogma by jihadis, you need a broader uh, set of tools to understand and interpret different data in, in formulating and implementing monetary policy. It's that simple. One final note, a word of caution is that the last discount rate that the Fed instituted and the last, yeah, was a discount rate and accompanying uh, easing in Fed funds as well, two Federal Reserve branch members voted against it. And as I recall, one of them was Kansas City. Uh, the loosening is just about to end. And hopefully we won't have to go the tightening route for a while because the economy is going to start slowing down and uh, the markets will, uh, will lower interest rates on their own without the Fed having to uh, risk uh, damaging inflationary expectations down the road and uh, the de-anchoring of 
and some of the tips markets and things like that. But, you know, the Fed is not going to destroy our currency and bring back hyperinflation. That ain't going to happen. I'm Mr. Fed, and that's the way it was.